the software project planning the first part towards the software project planning is identifying the scope of a software and establishing the feasibility out of the requirement so what do you mean by the scope scope can be considered as a boundary scope can be considered as a boundary everything which lies inside that boundary is part of your project and all the things all the function components all the things which which is which is present which is available out of that boundary it is not directly involved in your uh, software product so software scope and feasibility what do you mean by feasibility feasibility means whatever customer wants whatever is the requirement not everything can be built everything is not possible so you need to work out feasibility what all things are feasible what all things are practically possible see in english statement like i can i can say i want this i want that i i can i can clearly state out n number of requirements but as a programmer as a software developer as a manager as a software developer company you need to identify the feasibility you need to establish the feasibility it might happen that out of 199 maybe is feasible as is 99 points you are agree you are agreeing to build on you are agree to build but one thing which is not feasible not practically possible project feasibility is very important but but you need to consider the scope as well you need to consider the business requirement as well because if you build a technically very good product very high tech software that you are going to develop but if it doesn't satisfy the business need and nobody wants that software because their requirement is not in scope then that particular software is of no use and on the contrary and on the very on the contrary part like if you include too many things in that the scope that everybody wants it but it is not practically possible for you it is not practically feasible for you to develop a good quality software because of so many things that you have included in the scope so there is a very narrow margin between the scope and feasibility so the scope is defined using one of the two technique first a narrative description narrative description with the after communication with all the stakeholders point wise narrative description like this should be done this should be done say a banking example is there so credit should happen a debit should happen and so on so forth a narrative description of the scope these all things we need to include in the software a second second technique may be a set of use cases is developed by the now functions described in the statement of scope are evaluated and in some cases refined to provide more details prior to the beginning of the estimation again as we have already seen the compartmentalization so in a scope while defining scope a broad level of function can 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 be provided and if at and if at that time if you have some expertise some prior knowledge some prior uh, hands on with with that kind prior in try prior in, uh, experience with this kind of a software development then some kind of some kind of at some level of modularization or compartmentalization or decomposition is often useful because if you know like few more details about what you are going to develop then definitely more knowledge will help you to plan well well in advance i mean more knowledge will help you to plan <coughs> for for good planning so performance consideration me processing and response time requirement it considers processing and response time constraints identify limits place a software by external hardware available memory or other existing systems all these are the constraints 
now the next point is resources resources play a very important role in software project planning now the second planning task is estimation of the resources required to accomplish the software development effort first first one was identifying the scope of the project and feasibility second resources you need to identify estimate the resources needed in your uh, in, in 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 completion of the software development project now figure depicts the three major categories of the software engineering so this is the figure uh, figure uh, i forgot to place the figure theek hai uh let me draw it for you so people reusable software components and development environment okay so basically this is your project this is your project okay this is your project project is basically dependent on three kinds of resources first resource is people second resource is this reusable software components and third one is the development environment third one is the development environment hardware or software tools now what do you mean by this people people let us discuss something about this people you need to clearly plan that it is you, you are developing certain kind of a software so definitely you need to identify i need the you need the skill set of the people the skill set of the people required to accomplish this particular development activity number you need to identify the team size the number of people required to accomplish the task to prepare quality software in timely fashion quality develop a quality software within time you need to identify the location you need to identify the location of the people like since you are dealing since you are assume you are a multinational company so 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 how many number of people you want to a uh, place in a hyderabad or how many number of people you want to place in a in a, in, a, in a chennai or a mumbai location so so all these attributes all these all these attributes are related to the people you need to plan meticulously related to the people the experience of the people skill set or the experience needed you cannot go ahead in a project software development with all the freshers definitely you need some experience you cannot go with all experienced people budget overshoot will be there so you need a proper balance between experienced people um uh, experienced and i mean very good uh, um, i mean the expert programmers the good programmers and freshers you need a proper combination of this you need to clearly identify the numbers then you have this development environment now this development environment it talks about various software or hardware tools you require i mean since you are going to develop an application software you are going to develop one application software for particular need for particular client so definitely you need some kind of a environment which facilitates this kind of which 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 provides support for your development work the type of systems you require the type of networks you require the type of software tools the type of hardware which is needed for this proper development it needs to be identified and planned in advance reusable compo software components now reusable software components we have studied like industry is moving toward component based assembly but reusable component is preferred in softwares so 
so do we need to develop new components altogether all new components do we have to develop all the components for this particular project development or do we have some kind of a components which are already been developed and can be reused in this application reused in this software product definitely if we have something if we have already done something if we have some components available with us and simply simply assembling those components will will save your um, will save your time will save number of people required on this task because altogether if you want to develop a new program a new application then definitely you require say 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 five engineers and if you have few components available with you and you need to assemble those and 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 you need to develop a new you need to achieve certain target then definitely it might happen it might you might think that ki uh, i may not need five engineers i can do it with two engineers since assembling requires expertise but definitely it cannot i mean it 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 uh, it can be done with fewer peoples it can be done with fewer uh, fewer engineers so resources resources can be a living resource a developer manager a human being or it can be related to the hardware software tools it can be related to the the various what you can say the components the programs that has been already been developed can is is available so resource planning okay so planning of the resources as planning proper estimation estimating the resources is is very important for your uh, for the success we have mentioned here the human resources okay so the planning begins by evaluating the software scope and selecting the skills required to complete the development skills required to complete the development you need to identify the skills which is required for this development both organizational position that is manager needed senior software engineer specially telecommunication database client server and etc and etc you might need a variety of people with various skill sets like few are expert in telecommunication few might handle as as a database administrator or very good with the databases few are very good with the client server interaction because of this web based development and other activities so you need to clearly identify the skill set of the people for relatively small projects a single individual may perform all software engineering tasks consulting with a specialist as required hence the location of each human resource is specified location of each human resource is specified the number of people required for the software project can be determined only after an estimate of development effort how many number of people you actually require for this development project so after planning it can be done so human resource planning is very important as we have seen then reusable software resources reusable software resources component based software engineering it emphasizes reusability the scientist suggest four software resource categories that should be considered as planning proceed off the shelf components now off the shelf components off the shelf component means the software which are existing that can be acquired from a third party or from the past projects off the shelf components say for example let's say off the shelf can be acquired from third party for example you want to develop a java based project aapko uske liye eclipse ya netbeans chahiye so you are not going to develop eclipse and netbeans with with uh, by by your own you are going to purchase it from third party aap netbeans se eclipse ko ko contact karenge wahan se uske licenses lenge and simply you are going to use those off the shelf components that is a software tool for example agar aapko visual plus plus uh, microsoft ke koi product microsoft mein koi development karna hai to aap ye nahi hai ki aap baith ke visual studio khud develop karenge nahi aap visual studio ke licenses procure karenge aur aap usme kaam karenge off the shelf component full experience components existing specification design code or test data developed for past project that are similar to the software to be built for the current project so full experience component fully experience hum kise kahenge the fully experience means 
which has all the knowledge all the experience start from dealing with the customer planning requirement analysis data modeling design coding testing and then finally delivering it fully experience fully experience kise kahenge jisne ek pura सॉफ्टवेयर डेवलपमेंट लाइफ साइकिल को देखा है एक्सपीरियंस किया है पूरे सॉफ्टवेयर डेवलपमेंट लाइफ साइकिल का हिस्सा रहा है उस कंपोनेंट को हम कहेंगे फुल्ली एक्सपीरियंस कंपोनेंट सो यू नीड दिस फुल्ली एक्सपीरियंस कंपोनेंट एज वेल पार्शियल एक्सपीरियंस कंपोनेंट सो Existing specification, design code, or test data developed for past project that are related to the software to be built for the current project, but will require substantial modification. Substantial modification. These are partial experience components. So modifications required for partial experience component have a fair degree of risk. Fair degree of risk. उसमें एक अच्छा risk होता है. Why we have a fair degree of risk? Because members of the current software team. they only have limited experience in that application area which is represented by these components and totally new component software component you must be built by your team specifically for achieving the need the requirement of your current project so it is a new component so new component altogether you are going to develop partially experienced components the things are available but massive changes are needed full experience components entire thing is available with you and uh, minor changes are needed so uh, only the things cosmetic changes are needed 5 to 10% 20% and off the shelf components you don't have to do anything you simply go and buy the required licenses for your working needed to needed for your working and purchase it and start working on that